Right now at six, the American dream is becoming less attainable. I get past one um, obstacle and then here comes another huge obstacle that I have to jump. And Colorado is falling behind. Colorado, like much of the country, is in dire need of more meaningfully affordable homes. We have an in-depth look at the help coming to make our state more affordable for all Coloradans. A wild shootout caught on camera in the metro and tonight police need your help trying to find two dangerous men. Plus, unfounded claims of sexual assault are made against an Aurora City Council member. Getting a call like that is probably your worst nightmare. And investigators say the person who made them is the partner of the city's fired police chief. You cannot weaponize a system at your discretion. And good evening to you, and thank you for watching Denver 7 News at 6. I'm Andrew Hill. I'm Shannon Ogden. Glad you're with us tonight. Affordable housing is being tackled now at the federal level. Tonight, we have an in-depth look at President Biden's ambitious housing plan aimed at closing the housing supply gap within five years. So here in the metro, we know how precious affordable housing is. The average rent now for a one-bedroom apartment is more than $2,100. For a single-family home, the median price reached $660,000 wow. last month. Denver 7's Megan Lopez begins our in-depth reporting with a look at the president's plan and what's being done to address affordability right here in our state. There's a funny thing about dreams. They always seem so close, but so far away. This folder that I do have here, I started this. I like to call this journaling my journey. This is a story about Nishay Emanuel's dream to own a home. Started my first time home buying process in June of 2021. A story about Nishay getting so close to buying her first home, and yet. I want to say I've tried on at least 20 homes at least 20 homes, and I have not got one yes, not yet. Not being able to grasp her American dream. What I'm starting to see is happening for me is that I will bid um, and then I will get told that my bid wouldn't even matter because there's multiple bids over my bid amount. That story, unfortunately, not by any means unique in Colorado. Colorado, like much of the country, is in dire need of more meaningfully affordable homes. It's why the state legislature passed five bills worth nearly $400 million. Why Senator Jeff Bridges sponsored one focused on helping the middle class. The cost of housing has gone up so much that the average Colorado family can't afford the average Colorado house. That newly passed bill would offer incentives in the form of municipal bonds for developers to build middle income housing. It's to make sure that the folks that are just earning an average wage here, your nurses, your teachers, your firefighters, that they can afford to live in the communities where they work. The Biden administration also announcing Monday a housing supply action plan, promising to close the shortfall in five years. It includes investing in communities that have changed their zoning codes, boosting up modular housing, addressing supply chain issues, and ensuring government government-owned homes go to people who actually live in them. The Biden-Harris administration's announcement today is certainly, you know, a welcome one. I certainly think that there is now the potential for meaningful change. For Nache, that dream of owning a home isn't only for her. I want to be able to have that generational wealth, the American dream that everybody talks about, but right now it just seems like that dream is really out of reach. So she's staying positive, determined to one day have that dream become her reality. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. And now let's give you a better idea of what rent prices look like across the metro. According to rent.com, Littleton actually has the highest rent prices with people paying $2,400 on average for a studio apartment. Glendale and Inglewood follow Glendale and Inglewood follow with average rents of $2,100 and $1,900 respectively. And then Thornton and Lakewood are seeing the biggest increases of rent, though. Both have seen annual rent increases of close to 30%. And for some people, the only way they can afford these rising home costs is with federal help. So that is sometimes where things like FHA loans come in. Christina Pritchard signed a contract in April 2021 for a brand new condo in Aurora, thanks to the loan through the Federal Housing Administration. But then two weeks ago, it was learned that the condo building has not yet received approval from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for an FHA loan. Because I don't know if it's going to be mine. Like, you work so hard, like, you overcome so many things in life, and to, like, finally get there and work so hard for something. Um, and to have to tell him, like, we may not get it. Christina worries the approval delay will then impact her locked in loan rate, which expired in June. Well, a spokesperson for HUD says they're looking into the issue, but don't have a timeline of when approval might come. So let's focus on solutions now. Tomorrow, an eviction clinic opens in Arapahoe County. 
It is part of a pilot program funded by the American Rescue Plan Act to help low-income residents get resources and legal aid that is often expensive and hard to come by. Denver 7's Patrick Perez explains why this is so important. Legal aid is coming to Arapahoe County starting Tuesday to help low-income tenants dealing with eviction matters. Historically, over 90% of landlords are represented by a lawyer. Less than 5% of tenants are. Jonathan Asher is the executive director of Colorado Legal Services, the group the county is partnering with to help provide aid. Those services include helping tenants get rental assistance, have a better understanding of their rights, and more. Sometimes it's simply negotiating more time or keeping the eviction off a tenant's record so it eases their ability to rent housing in the future. The county says the one and a half million dollars in funding for the pilot program is coming from the American Rescue Plan Act. It's modeled after a similar eviction program in Adams County, which helped more than 85% of the households it served stay housed by giving them more time to move or by getting a housing voucher. As we all know, the price of living in the metro area is, is it rapidly increasing. And of course, if people have gone through any kind of professional or medical setbacks during the pandemic, uh, they may have suddenly found themselves in a position that they didn't anticipate. The clinic is available by appointment Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays between 8 and 11 a.m. at the Arapahoe Plaza in Littleton for the foreseeable future. Patrick Perez, Denver 7. And we have more information on how to sign up for an appointment on our website, thedenverchannel.com. Shocking video tonight from Denver police. Take a look at this. It shows an argument escalate into a shooting at the native hotel near 16th and Wazi in downtown Denver. This was May 8th. Two people were taken to the hospital with serious injuries. So police have released two photos of the suspects. If you have any information, you're asked to call police. An arrest warrant is out for the partner of fired Aurora Police Chief Vanessa Wilson. Aurora police say she made a false report of child sex abuse about city council member Danielle Jarinski. Well, today, Jarinski publicly addressed those claims. Probably one of the worst moments of my life. Uh, I was almost unconsolable. The caseworker had to stop talking several times to allow me to regroup um, and try to calm down. Um, I, it was hard to process a thought at that, at that moment. On Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski in the newsroom at 6. Jen, you had an exclusive interview with the councilwoman right before that press conference. Shannon, we did. Councilwoman Jarinski was emotional as she described the impact these allegations have had on her family. She said for weeks they couldn't sleep and she lived in fear she might lose her son. You know, as a mother, um, getting a call like that is probably your worst nightmare. Aurora City Councilwoman Danielle Jarinski is speaking as a mother and talking about the allegations in this nine page arrest affidavit. They are awful. Court documents claim former police chief Vanessa Wilson's partner made a false report against Jarinski. Investigators say Robin Nasita told caseworkers the councilwoman sexually assaulted her toddler in front of coworkers. DHS found that this was completely unfounded. These were completely unfounded allegations against me. A felony arrest warrant has now been issued against Nasita for retaliation against an elected official. It's devastating. You have so many thoughts, uh, you know, go through through your mind, and of course. Worst case is, what if they take my child? Jarinski says the complaint led to an agonizing 15-day DHS investigation. You cannot weaponize a system that is in place to protect children at your discretion to try and take a happy, healthy, and very loved little boy away from his mother. The call to social services was traced back to Nasita's personal cell phone. And the complaint was made a day after the councilwoman went on the radio and was outspoken against then police chief Vanessa Wilson, leading investigators to believe it was retaliation. Vanessa Wilson is trash. You obviously have faced a lot of criticism for your words. What do you want to say about that? I can take the criticism and I can take the name calling and, and you know, I mean, my businesses have been attacked. I've had censure charges against me. I mean, you name it. Uh, the last six months have been absolutely brutal. But you go after someone's child and that's a, that's a different arena. Jarinski gave us the okay to use those photos of her son. And here's more. Nasita worked for the social services department where she made the complaint. She was a social worker at Arapahoe County for five years. Nasita resigned from her position earlier this month. The councilwoman's attorney is now calling on every case she works to be investigated.
For now, I'm live in the newsroom. I'm Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski. Thank you, Jen. Several hundred homes remain evacuated where the High Park fire burns west of Cripple Creek, southwest of Colorado Springs. Yesterday morning, the Rocky Mountain Complex Incident Management Team 1 took over control of the fire, and that team brings in more resources to fight the fire. The High Park fire is currently burning 1,500 acres. It is 27% contained, and no structures have been damaged. Now, in southwest Colorado, firefighters have gotten a good handle on the Ute Pass fire. That one's near Durango. Evacuation orders have been lifted for the 60 homes that were forced to evacuate on Friday. And the Ute Pass fire has burned 30 acres, and it is now 80% contained. Dark skies, some showers and thunderstorms. I'll let you know which days will be the wettest coming up this week. An iconic Denver ice cream shop is preparing for its grand reopening. It's time that we let uh, people in and interact with the staff. After two years of the pandemic, Bonnie Bray is ready to welcome you back. It's important for us to be part of the community and coming into the store is an important part of that. Plus, the Avs quest for the cup continues tomorrow. We look at what to expect from their series with the Blues. 